I like cinema blend. Like I'll, that's that's my morning right there. That's my that's my coffee and. Uh, Someone's asking me for an answer to a question, usually Michelle, and I'm looking at Cinema Blend, right. going like, uh huh, no, yeah. I totally hear you. Right, I'll call you right back. You're Do you like, realize oh. who's directing Blade? I'll say to her. <laughs> <laughs> what was the one factor from the original that you both wanted to preserve? And at the same time, where did you think the greatest change could have been had? Well, I think the, though it's not the most exciting answer, the, the first question answer is obvious to us. It's Warwick. Warwick. It's that he grounds this universe completely. And, and something about the sort of the, the silhouette he struck in 1988 and the presence he brought to that movie, it just screams fantasy, credible, the world is real, the stakes are real. And the opportunity to bring that character back was at the heart of why we wanted to do this. And then the flip side of that question, just as important, was Alora Dannon. Because for both of us, it seemed like this was the unusual thing that because the, the movie had been focused on this child and we're told at the start of the movie that this baby is going to be an empress, almost unique among all IP, it begs for a sequel. You have to know what that journey is and we as as people who grew up in these stories know it's not going to be an easy journey and it's going to be fraught and probably pretty scary you know well, that's the thing it's so tempting when you get to play with some of your inside some of your favorite worlds that you yes. have such affection for from your own childhood but as john's saying you have to we always begin with that question of why are we telling this story and we were so lucky because Willow, the, the original film, left us with this incredible question and journey we wanted to see of Alora Dan and yes. what happened to that baby? What happened to that baby? Did she become the empress? So, you know, did was Willow able yeah. to, to train her and teach her and what are they up against next? So we had a natural jumping off point for this story and John had an incredible an incredible take on where to go, where to go with it. Oh, it means a lot. Like it, it truly does. And I think that the experience that that I had shooting the show with everyone. It just means the world to me and the relationships, like the friendships that we've created on set were just really wonderful. I was a fan of the original movie and I watched it as a kid. So uh, being a part of this was exciting and, and you know, I'm honored to be a part of it. Um, and then beyond that, I just, I had so much fun on set with these guys as well. And, so fun. and you know, I just can't wait for people to see it. It's a, I think it's a very surreal exp experience yeah. and feeling. I think you don't think about this part of it when you're mm. actually filming it. And mm. so it, it feels kind of like a, a dreamlike situation. I was certain all the way through filming and, and actually now that I was going to absolutely screw this up and crash and burn and then my career would be over. So the fact that we're here and people are enjoying it is still a surprise to me. Um, but it's a, it's a joy to be part of this, not just Willow, but the, the fantasy adventure world which I grew up with um, and to be able to play one of my favorite archetypes within it and deconstruct it and do it with you know the biggest sword in the world that was written for me by our showrunner John Caston was uh, like the little child inside me it was, it was, it was his dream. I was reading there was a pretty intense boot camp experience mm. that went into getting all this together everyone trained and bonded as a cast so I wanted to start off with what your favorite memory or proudest moment was after mm. going through that experience. First day of boot camp, the the production gave us a hat that said, "I survived boot camp." Oh yeah, I was like, <laughs> really preemptive and like very they nearly. Had no we, idea what we was did coming not. even. Um, <laughs> well, was I love. <laughs> I love the stunts. I, I it's hard to you know what there was a there was a, I won't say specifically what, but there was some things from the original movie that they were like, you know what, you should learn this exactly and it'll be a little Easter egg and maybe I'm saying too much, but whatever, I've started it and I can't stop. And then the moment, the moment that I got it, I was like, okay, that's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was, it was how rewarding it was to like train our bodies to do something and then suddenly they could do something that they couldn't do before. I think that was really cool. And me and Aaron, our characters were trained together a lot and we um, fight together a lot and we did this one fight where we had to get everything in sync and it was so hard and then fi like we just did it all day every day for like a week and finally we got this whole I think they cut it honestly 
I think I, when I watched it, we never gone. even saw it. My best memory during was there were these cardboard boxes that kind of separated areas in um, this big warehouse that we were doing the, the boot camp the in. The stunt yeah, the team stunt was also team. training in. Yeah, and so they, would, they had these boxes up to kind of like, I suppose, separate from the PT area. Mm. And one day, I think it was you, you... Armor. Armor, Tony. Uh, no, I'm Tony. Tony. <laughs> you, I'm Tony. Armor, Dempsey and, and Dempsey. I. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. just decided, we were like, should we just run through them and see what happens and if we get in any huge trouble about it? So we literally like pelted ourselves at but, these cardboard boxes and it was possibly. Well, we all did it separately. <laughs> we didn't do it at the same time. No, we didn't. We all did it separately. <laughs> and it was like they were having a big conversation about like fight scenes and fight choreography and what Super it was going to look like. And Amr just like dive rolls through the boxes. Dempsey just like flat back goes back. <laughs> Ellie just walks like it's nothing and goes, sorry, where's the bathroom? <laughs> I don't remember what I did, but I do remember what you all did. Oh, I think I might have put on the like VR goggles and just walked through yeah, I think that was and like it. pretended. To... <laughs> anyway, that was that was a very fun. That was moment. a great memory. We on the very last day of boot camp, we went we went back to Tony's mm. and um, we actually we played video games. Played or VR. Uh, yeah, that, I guess that's how we would we celebrated. Yeah. Um, but it felt so relaxing to just be like, okay, and we're done. And Tony has these recliners too, which mm. I was just they're they're so much more enjoyable when you know you don't have to wake up at six in the morning and was work that, out. Was that the night with the the red LEDs? No, that was oh, like that God. was one of the first weekends. Yeah, I mean, I I actually learned to horse ride, and that was such an achievement for me. And there was one horse riding session towards the end of the boot camp that Ellie and I went on. And they were like, do you guys want to try flag riding? And we're like, what's that? And they just gave us massive flags. So we learned to like joust and ride around with these flags and it looked insane. And I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. I grew up in East London. <laughs> there are no horses there. How did you both go about building not only the sibling chemistry, but the twin sibling chemistry? Because there's just that little extra twist when it's a twin. Mm -hmm. So it was crazy. I mean, the first time we, we didn't honestly do anything. Yeah. It was immediate. And I wish that it I was really like was. this secret acting technique that makes you a twin with someone. But we just got on <laughs> FaceTime and it was immediate. It was like, oh, I know you. Like, yeah. I think we literally said that to each yeah. other. And then yeah. do you remember what happened like the second day that we hung out with the cashier? Of course I remember that. Well, do you want to tell? Okay, yeah, sure. Well, we were with, we were together, yeah, it was like the first or second time we were hanging out, and this guy asked us if we were twins, and we were like, yeah, we are, and he was like, oh, I would know, because I have a twin, and we were like, you're so smart. And he was holding our IDs, which had our different names and birthdays, <laughs> so it was just a bit, like, cool. Either he's a plant for the production, or he's just really, really <laughs> Oh, that's so, Disney was making us feel like twins Whoa. the whole time. This is a Truman Show moment. Yeah, no, it was definitely just like hanging out together, and yeah. like getting, like, discovering our twin energy to just translate onto screen like that it was so easy honestly yeah, to become the twins the, twi as we the call twins now. aaron you've worked with the mcu and star wars and amar you've been part of the, the wheel of time series and mm. those are obviously big deals in and of themselves but willow's no slouch either how would you say your experience on this project differed from those previous projects I think the, the size of the production is, is quite similar, but for some reason Willow felt way more, um, I think maybe because we were on a, on a smaller, in a smaller studio, mm. um, it felt way more intimate. Like I feel like everybody knew everybody and it mm. became like this gigantic family. Everybody got really close really quickly. And it was just us at the studio, no other Yeah, there was no, there. I think that makes it like really like enclosed yeah. and it feels very intimate. Yeah, it felt um, like a campus. I mean, I think Wheel of Time, the scale again is humongous and it was a joy to be there. And it was, but it's so much more a bigger story uh, than what we were doing. And we, we were just really creating this motley crew, like a breakfast club, John Hughes vibe, uh, and then just throwing them into every situation possible. So it's almost quite insular in a way. Tony, just a quick note. This is your second big Disney project. We gotta get, we gotta get you in a Star Wars now. Or maybe, maybe we should just get everyone in a Star Wars now. I would love it. I would love it. I mean, Aaron has already done it, and Warwick already has done it. But I could see, uh, I could see, you know, Umra as a big, you know, stormtrooper kind of guy. Dempsey as a, you know, ragtag type of rebel. 
you would be destroying the empire slowly, yeah, bit by bit, I, in like an Andor series. I'm really desperate. I love Andor so mm-hmm. much. Like I, I passionately love Andor. I would love to be like a like a little like guru <laughs> out in a far, far, far planet that like speaks like Yoda but doesn't look like him and <laughs> has the Force. That oh, would be fun. That would be just be like fun. sitting in a corner going. Hmm. One thing that I think we're both fantasizing about as the future of this whole business we're in is that maybe there's the possibility that the train can go the other way a little bit. And sometimes these series can culminate in, in theatrical experiences that you need to see in a the theater. I, I think, you know, Benioff and Weiss wanted that with Game of Thrones. I think there's lots of opportunity to do that. And we'd love to see that happen. I think Disney would too, ultimately. There's so many cool new storytelling possibilities out yeah. there. So it's been, we feel very lucky that we got to do this as a series, in fact. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's just totally. so many more creative opportunities that afforded us over the eight chapters and yeah. just incredible, imaginative, like endlessly imaginative ideas that come out of my yeah. friend John here <laughs> that we uh, got to do in just one season. So it's pretty cool to, you know, we're But we're, we're you know, both Michelle and I come from the movie. So like, you know, I'm counting the days till Avatar comes out. I'm a devotee of the Cineplex. And Willow for me was, you know, it was a very informative movie going experience because it was so big and and so epic.